Josh Hurd has been the interim athletic director here at the University of Louisville since December, but he says that didn't really affect how he approached the job. Most of the main roads in and around Elizabethtown are actually in good shape. Crews were out last night treating them so they didn't freeze over with all of the icy rain that we saw. The area here around Moss Creek Avenue in Bowling Green was one of the hardest hit by a wave of tornadoes in western Kentucky earlier this month. Polio has clashed with lawmakers before, whether it's over COVID-19, armed officers in schools, or just school funding in general. Now, this task force is expected to talk about several different issues in regards to child care, but one of the big issues that's been discussed here in Frank for the last several years is funding for universal pre-K. During the interim education committee meeting here in Frankfurt, many Republicans asked if more could be done to ease the requirements on teachers or at least cut down on the amount of paperwork they need to go through. Fancy Farm 2021 was a bit more subdued than in years past. COVID is one reason, but the main reason is all the political speakers were from the same party. Add another court decision to the pile of conflicting opinions about whether or not Governor Andy Bashir can implement COVID restrictions. Imagine having a deadly tornado in your backyard. When it was happening, the house cracked and we didn't know what to do. So we were trying to go under the bed somewhere safe to stay while it was happening. 11-year-old Martha Garcia Hernandez tried to take shelter in her home as the storm came through in Bowling Green earlier this month. When it happened, the windows cracked and we thought it was going to hurt the kids and stuff, but it didn't actually happen anything to the windows or anything. The Garcia Hernandez home is here on Moss Creek Avenue in Bowling Green, actually just down the road here. If you can see that white car all the way down there, just over my shoulder, that's about where their house is. Now, the main reason I'm pointing that out is because just a few houses down is where you start to see some of the more severe tornado damage. Garcia Hernandez says the immediate aftermath was jarring. So we went outside and we couldn't know how much like people lost their lives. My friends, pretty much most of them lost their lives and it was really terrifying. 12 of the 17 people who died in Bowling Green from the tornado lived on Moss Creek Avenue. Nearly two weeks later, neighbors are still cleaning up. Garcia Hernandez says her home was battered by some trampolines that got tossed around by the tornado. We could hear that like that up there. It actually um, one of the trampoline stuff actually hurt it and it went through there. And she lived with her grandparents for a few days until the power came back on. Now they're trying to prepare for Christmas, which she says is going to be painful. When we were walking down, we saw many Christmas trees up and I just, it was pain for us because they were going to have their Christmas calm and fun and giving gifts to family and stuff. And it was not going to look like that after this. Like many Christmas trees were in the road and it looked really terrible when they were picking up stuff. And people around Moss Creek Avenue will continue picking up the remains well beyond the holiday. In Bowling Green, Joe Ragusa, Spectrum News. A weekend full of heavy guitar riffs. And not just on the concert stages either. Squiggy DiGiacomo runs the music experience tent at the Louder Than Life Festival, where people can come in to play dozens of guitars. We just want to inspire people, youth, old people, middle-aged people to pick up a guitar. And he's seen his fair share of characters over the years. Uh, there's always two-piece bikini guy, there's a Jesus guy, there's a thong guy. But up until recently, the concert industry was quiet due to COVID-19. It was your worst nightmare. You know, like not only can you not, you know, bring guitars out and watch people light up and be inspired and all of that, it's like you're literally out of business can't do anything. But now the industry is loud again. COVID is still out there in high numbers, but the festival required either a vaccination or a recent negative test. Festival producer Jamie McCurry says that part of the weekend ran smoothly. You know, I think because this is now more of an industry standard, um, you know, the fans realized that this is what they needed to be able to get back to having a festival of this size and, and to be able to celebrate the return of, of live events. And after a year off last year, fans were glad to be back. I'm stoked. I think it's really awesome. It, it kind of sucked it not being here. It sucked being cooped up in the house, you know. It's good to get out again. Robbie Madden says the vaccine or negative test requirement made him feel safer. I, I, I think it's awesome. I'm, I'm vaccinated. I, like I, I was saying, I know everybody has their own personal opinions, but I feel I do feel better about you know coming here. And there's a, there's a crap load of people. I I do feel better even like going to the bars. You know, you don't you have no clue. But I, I feel safer knowing that that they they were checking for that. It's too early to tell exactly how next year's event will look, but organizers are already working on it. 
In Louisville, Joe Ragusa, Spectrum News. Just a junior at Fairdale High School, Sammy Zerschmied is already prepping for a career working on diesel vehicles. Working with my dad one day on his truck, and I thought it was really fun. And then the next year was my freshman year, and I found out that they had a diesel technician class. So I signed up for it and tried it out. Mr. Krebs was a great teacher, kind of kept me into it. The high school hosted a job recruiting event where students like Zerschmied got the chance to show off what they've been learning. Uh, right now, we got little stations. We're changing the brake pads on the back, the hub in the front, and then we're over there in the back, and we're taking the tire off of the rim and putting that back on. Reps for several companies came to scout potential job candidates and even interview some of them. They know us now because we come in here, it previews our, our stuff that we offer to them so they know what they're, what they're looking for and it lets us see the skills of kids we probably wouldn't see without a, a school like this. Larry Minnick with Waste Management says with the number of openings they have, these kids will have plenty of opportunities. It, it's been very difficult the last couple of years. I mean, we know we've run five to six technicians short. You know, we, we need drivers really bad. We've been short on drivers. So it's starting to come back around a little bit. But these classes help us find kids, like I said, that we wouldn't normally see because it's really harder at the moment. So. The program at Fairdale has been in the works since 2019. <laughs> and teacher Stephen Krebs says they're hoping to bridge the gap between students and employers. We never get a shortage of emails or, or, or contact from employers to say, hey, you know, we're hiring, do you have interested students? And uh, we always have students that are wanting to work, and it's hard to play that middleman. Many of the students, including Zershmeed, have the same goal. Finding a good job with the right company, something I like to do. A goal he's trying to achieve before he even graduates. In Louisville, Joe Ragusa, Spectrum News.